This is an overview of JSON-LD's expansion and compaction algorithms. Expansion and compaction are some of the most important features in JSON-LD, and this tutorial is designed to give you a quick overview of how those features work. Now, if you remember, JSON-LD allows you to give meaning to the JSON data that you're using. So, for example, it can take your keys and your JSON data like this and map them to these long URLs. These long URLs, while a pain for developers to use, are great for machines because the machine knows that when you say name, what you really mean is this identifier. Right? And that means that the machines are able to more easily process and merge data from different sources. For developers, JSON-LD is great because you can still continue to use uh, the data like you did your JSON data before by referring to pieces of data using short IDs like this name. Now, if we think about why JSON-LD was created. One of the primary purposes was for data exchange. We wanted to be able to merge data from all these different sources and simplify it so that software programs could work with one piece of data rather than data from each one of these different sources. So in general, we wanted a very clean mapping process between all these different web services that exist out there on the web and the programs that we wanted to write. In order to do that, there are two mechanisms in JSON-LD that work together. One of them is called expansion, the other one is called compaction. Now expansion basically takes a JSON key, like name, it puts it through an algorithm, an expansion process algorithm, and spits out a long URL here. Compaction basically does the opposite of that. It takes a long URL, puts it through the compaction algorithm, and spits out a short, easy to remember, easy to use identifier. Right? So this is the data that machines want to use, and this is the data that most web developers want to use. So let's look at an example of expansion and compaction. Let's say we start off with this document here. Right? We've got a context, a JSON-LD context, which is schema.org, and we've got a simple piece of data, name Jane. Right? If we take that and we send it through the expansion process, the expansion process will use this context to expand name out into this long uh, identifier. So this is what the machine ends up seeing, and this is great for a machine because it knows exactly what we mean by name. Now if we take that same object, note that the context has been removed, if we take that same object and send it back through the compaction process, we end up where we started, with a context added back into the object in short key value pairs such that a developer can more easily work with the data. So expansion basically removes context. It applies this context to the data and removes the context, while compaction adds the context back in so that it's easy for a developer to work with the data. Now, let's see why uh, expansion and compaction are so important when you're working with uh, data from the real world. Right? So let's say that we've got a couple of social media sites, and each one of them has um, messages that it creates. And then we've got Shouter, we've got Joined Up, we've got Big Hash and Mugtome, and each one of them has a different type of message, but they're all basically the same thing. It's somebody saying something on the web. Now what we'd like to do is, using JSON-LD, take data from each one of these different web services, pipe it through a black box, and end up with something useful, something that our programs can use to easily process. Right? So let's take a look inside uh, of this black box for a bit. So inside the black box, we've got two pieces of data coming in. This, this piece of data is coming from a service called Shouter, and this piece of data is coming from a service called uh, Big Hash. Right? And the data looks more or less the same. To humans, you can pick out that this is probably the user ID here, Nick Jane, Yeller Jane, right? And this is the message, right? This is the, this is the thing that the person's saying. So this service uses text as the key. This service uses shout as the key. But it's basically the same kind of data being published by both services. Now what we want to be able to do is take this data 
and modify it such that it unifies the data for our software application. And we use the expansion process to do that. So we take the input data from uh, the big hash service, we feed it into the JSON-LD expansion algorithm, we provide the big hash JSON-LD context as input to the expansion algorithm, and what we end up with is this normalized object. This is a machine-readable object. Uh, as we can see, it's much more verbose. A developer would never really want to work with this object, but machines love this type of information. It's very specific, right? So, so Nick here has actually been expanded out into this URL using the big hash context, and so has text. Text has been expanded out into this long URL using the big hash JSON-LD context. Now we apply the same kind of thing to the, um, the input data from this site. Uh, so we apply the shouter JSON-LD context to the expansion algorithm. Uh, this gets turned into name, and this gets turned into common text. So in this process, using the expansion algorithm, we've taken data from two different websites, two different disparate data sources, and we've normalized it. Now the problem here is that no developer would actually want to work with this data. So we have to send it through another process to give the developer something that's going to be very easy to work with. So that's where the compaction algorithm comes in. We take this long, big, machine-readable uh, piece of data, we feed it into the compaction algorithm, we also give the compaction algorithm our application's JSON-LD context, and the JSON-LD compaction algorithm will output something that's really easy for a developer to use. Right? This is what a developer wants to, wants to work with. And that's what basically comes out of the black box, is something that's very easy to use for a developer. So this is how we do automatic translation of data from multiple different websites that were never really meant to interoperate with one another. Using JSON-LD, we can take all of these different data sources, remap them using the expand and compact calls in JSON-LD, and spit out something that is very easy to use, very uniform, so that our software application only really needs to work with one type of data. Right? That's one of the key features of JSON-LD, and which is one of the reasons that it's really useful uh, to web developers. It basically normalizes all types of data coming in uh, using JSON-LD uh, and spits out something that makes writing programs much simpler. Now, if you're interested in learning more about JSON-LD, there's a website called json-ld.org um, that you can go to. It's got many more tutorials of this nature on there. Uh, if you'd like, please share this video and tutorial with your fellow developers and friends. Uh, it's released under Creative Commons uh, Attribution Share Like License, which allows you to share and remix uh, as, as much as you'd like. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, please look for more tutorials on JSON-LD uh, on the web. This video was made possible by contributions from Educational Testing Service, Accredit Trust, and Digital Bazaar. The video is copyright 2015 by Educational Testing Service and is provided under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. This means that you are free to share and modify the content in this video as long as Educational Testing Service is attributed and the same license is used for any derivative works.